Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 on our video lectures on sections 10.1 and 10.2. In the previous video, we were given the formula for a sequence and we had to write out the terms for it. But what if instead, we're given the terms of a sequence and we want to come up with the formula for it? Now these formulas that we come up with, they will be explicit formulas, not recursive, and in order to establish these formulas, we need to start recognizing patterns. So let's say that we're given the following sequence and we want to come up with the nth term formula for it. Now the sequence is 2 over 1, negative 4 over 3, 8 over 5, negative 16 over 7, and 32 over 9. Now before we come up with the formula for this one, I want to give you guys a couple of hints that's gonna, that are going to help you come up with formulas on your own. So let's take a look at them. So here's the first hint that I want to give you. You want to look for a common difference between the terms or a common ratio between the terms of the sequence. If you spot a common difference, then you'll know that you're going to be dealing with an arithmetic sequence, but if you spot a common ratio between the terms, then you'll know that you're going to be dealing with a geometric sequence. All right, so what was an arithmetic sequence? Well, an arithmetic sequence is just a sequence of numbers where each term after the first one is obtained by adding a fixed constant number, called the common difference, to the preceding term. And here's an example of, a, of an arithmetic sequence. So the terms of the sequence are 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. Now this one here is an arithmetic sequence because you notice that between each of the terms, you do have a common difference between them. The difference between a 2 and a 5, or the 5 and a 2, is 3. You're adding 3 each time. Between a 5 and an 8, you're adding 3. This one here is the common difference, which is normally represented by a d. All right, now the formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is the following. a sub n is equals to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Now, the quick way of getting the common difference d here, I'll write it as a separate formula. d is equals to the difference between uh, the a sub n plus 1 term minus a sub n. So this is just the difference between two terms. Okay, so with this formula in mind, what would be the equation or the formula for the, earth, for the nth term of the sequence that we have here, the 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14? Well, we get to see here that our a1 is 2, and we said that the common difference here was 3, so we can go ahead and rewrite it here as a sub n, or write down the formula as a sub n is equals to 2 plus n minus 1 times the common difference of 3 here. If we simplify this out, distributing the 3, we're going to get a sub n is equals to 2 plus 3n minus 3. Simplifying it out, we're going to have here 3n 2 plus a negative 3 is going to be a negative 1. And there we go. The formula for the nth term of this particular sequence is 3 times n minus 1. And you can verify it here. Let's say that we wanted to figure out, okay, well, what would be the fourth term of the sequence? Well, if we plug in 4 here, 3 times 4 is 12 minus 1 is 11. So that's exactly what we expected for our fourth term. Okay, guys, now as we will be encountering more and more problems. I definitely recommend that you make sure that you memorize this formula. It will be very useful. Okay, now before we move on to geometric sequence, I want to give you guys a couple of pointers or extra hints. Whenever you encounter consecutive even numbers, those are usually given by the formula 2n, and consecutive odd numbers are given by the formula 2n plus 1. These ones are arithmetic sequences. Okay, now what about a geometric sequence? Well, a geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers where each term after the first one is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a fixed constant number called the common ratio. So here's an example of a geometric sequence. The sequence is 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Now, if you take a look at the terms here, in order to go from the first one to the second one, so from to go from 2 to 4, and then from 4 to 8, well, you get to notice that you're essentially multiplying by 2 each time. This number that you're multiplying the preceding term is known as a common ratio. And this one here is usually denoted by r. Now, once you spot the common ratio, and you know that you're dealing with a geometric sequence, then the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence is the following. a sub n is equals to the first term times the common ratio 
raised to the n minus 1. And if you want to think of a formula for the common ratio, then it's just, well, as the name says, the ratio of one term over the preceding term. Okay? Now, with this formula in mind, what's going to be the formula for the sequence? Well, we get to see here again, r a 1, the first term is 2. So then the formula is going to be a sub n is going to be equals to 2 times the common ratio, which was 2, raised to the n minus 1. And there we go. So again, guys, as, you, as long as you recognize that, hey, there's a common ratio, then you know that you're going to be using this formula. Now, for this section, I did not go over the derivation for these formulas, but if you're interested, let me know. I just trust that you guys have encountered them before and you've seen their derivations. So I'm just essentially giving you guys a refresher here. All right, so a couple of hints involving the geometric sequences. You want to go ahead and look for powers sometimes because that can be helpful. So you want to look for powers of 2, powers of 3. If you notice that, then you know that you're dealing with a geometric sequence. All right, so another hint. If you notice that the sequence has al its alternating signs, then you know that you'll need a power of negative 1, which is going to be either to the nth power or the n plus 1 power, depending on which sign your first term is. And we saw this type of sequences here in our previous video with this one here where we saw, oh yeah, it was alternating signs. So that's how we knew that you had to have a negative 1 raised to some power. Okay, now let's continue here with one more hint. Sometimes it's helpful to look for perfect squares or perfect cubes in a sequence. So for example, if I gave you the following sequence, let's say I gave you 1, 8, 27, and 64, and let's say it continued. If we wanted to come up with the nth term for this one, notice that we have a 1, which is a 1 cubed, an 8, which is a 2 cubed, a 27, which is 3 cubed, and so forth. So the formula for this one would be n cubed. All right, so last and final hint. If you see that each term is multiplied by the next consecutive number, then you might want to consider using factorials. Okay, so with all these hints in mind, let's see if we can come up with a formula for this particular sequence. Okay, so the first thing that I notice in this sequence here is that I am alternating signs. Notice that your first term is positive, then negative, positive, negative. So I know that if it's alternating signs, then you should have a negative 1 raised to some power. So let me go ahead and write it here, a sub n. I know that I'm going to have, I'll put this one here in red, a negative 1 raised to, okay, well, what power? Well, if we're assuming that we're going to be starting with 1, so if, you, if we just put in an n, if n is equals to 1, well, then you have negative 1 raised to the first, which is negative, but that's not what we want. We want to start off with a positive. So it means that I need to have the first term be positive. So I'm going to go ahead and add a plus 1 here. Because if I do, then, if I let n equals to 1, well, n is 1, plus 1 is 2, negative 1 squared is positive. And there we go. That matches. Now, would the second term match? If n is 2, for example, and I'll put here n equals to 1, n equals to 2, all the way until n equals to 5. All right, so let's see. If n was 2, then 2 plus 1 is 3. It's cubic. So negative 1 raised to the third is also a negative. Okay, so that works out. Okay, now another hint that uh, maybe I should have mentioned before is that sometimes it helps to focus on the numerator and the denominator individually. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the denominator. I'll put this one here in blue. So my denominators are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So I'll write it here. There we go. The sequence is 1, 3, 7, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Okay. Now, does this one here look like a geometric or an arithmetic sequence? Well, if you notice, as you're going from 1 to 3, then 3 to 5, and 5 to 7, you're always adding 2 here. So there we go. This is telling us that the common difference is 2, so we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. Now, we know that the formula for the arithmetic sequence is going to be a sub n is equal to a 1. Well, I guess I'll write down the formula again. It's going to be a 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now, putting in the values, we're going to get 
a sub n is equals to 1 plus n minus 1 times 2, which now at this point I'm just going to go ahead and simplify it, which will give us a 2n minus 1. Okay, now let's go ahead and focus on the numerator. I'm just going to move this one here for the to the right once we have our final answer. Now, oops, missing the 1. And there we go. All right, so focusing on the numerator, let's see, I'll put the numerator in green. And our numerator was 2, negative 4. Well, since we already took into account the alternating signs, I'm just going to focus on the numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Okay, now, is there a pattern that we have here? Well, notice here that this is pretty much the same example that I gave you below for a geometric series. So, we already know the formula for this one. So the formula should be a sub n is equals to 2 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. But this one, I'm going to simplify it a little bit more. So notice that we have a 2 raised to the first times a 2 raised to the n minus 1. So this one, so they have the same base. So we know that the powers, we add them up. So we should have 2 times 1 plus n minus 1. And you get to see here that, oh, well, yeah, well, the 1 and the negative 1 cancel out. So we're just left with... 2 to the n. Now, I'm using this trick right now because it's a trick that, well, we can use later on with different types of problems, especially dealing with sequences and series. Alrighty, so now we took into account the alternating signs with the negative 1 raised to the n plus 1. We know the sequence or the pattern for the numerator, it's 2 to the n, and we know the pattern for the denominator, the general term was given by 2n minus 1, and there we go. This is the general term for the sequence here. Okay, so what do you think? Would you have been able to come up with this formula? Truth be told, when I was a student, I had a really hard time coming up with the general term for a particular sequence, and the thing is, a lot of it is just practice. As you do more and more sequences, you'll find that you're going to become better at establishing patterns. All right, so in order to get more practice, well, let's take a look at a couple more examples. All right, so let's take a look here at the following examples and see if we can come up with the, for the general formula for the nth term of a sequence. Okay, so beginning with the first one, we have 7, well, 3, 7, 11, 15, and it keeps on going. So what would be the general term for this one? All right, so so the formula should be a sub n is equals to 2 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. But this one, I'm going to simplify it a little bit more. So notice that we have a 2 raised to the first times a 2 raised to the n minus 1. So this one, so they have the same base. So we know that the powers, we add them up. So we should have 2 times 1 plus n minus 1. And you get to see here that, oh, well, yeah, well, the 1 and the negative 1 cancel out. So we're just left with 2 to the n. Now, I'm using this trick right now because it's a trick that, well, we can use later on with different types of problems, especially dealing with sequences and series. Alrighty, so now we took into account the alternating signs with the negative 1 raised to the n plus 1. We know the sequence or the pattern for the numerator, it's 2 to the n. And we know the pattern for the denominator, the general term was given by 2n minus 1, and there we go. This is the general term for the sequence here. Okay, so what do you think? Would you have been able to come up with this formula? Truth be told, when I was a student, I had a really hard time coming up with the general term for a particular sequence, and the thing is, a lot of it is just practice. As you do more and more sequences, you'll find that you're going to become better at establishing patterns. All right, so in order to get more practice, well, let's take a look at a couple more examples. All right, so let's take a look here at the following examples and see if we can come up with the, for the general formula for the nth term of a sequence. Okay, so beginning with the first one, we have 7, well, 3, 7, 11, 15, and it keeps on going. So what would be the general term for this one? All right, so if we take a look at the numbers here, 3, 7, 11, and 15, well, I can see that in order to go from one term to the next, it looks like I need to add 4 each time. Okay, so this one is our common difference, so we know that we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. 
So going to the formula here, which I'll write again, a sub n is equals to the first term plus n minus one times the common difference. Putting in the values for our first term and the common difference, we're gonna get three plus n minus one times four. Now simplifying this a little bit more by distributing the four here, we're gonna have four n minus one. And there you go. This one here will give us the general term. Now the nice thing about sequences, just as factoring, you can always check your work. Let's say that I wanted to verify the work by getting, let's say, the fourth term for this one. So if I wanted to get the fourth term, then let's see a sub four is gonna be equals to four times four minus one, which is indeed 15. So it checks out. All right, perfect. Now what about the next one? All right, so for the next one, I'll let you guys try it here. So we were having our first term is two, then negative one, then one half, then a negative one fourth. So why don't you guys go ahead and give it a go? I'll let you pause the video and then we'll verify our answer. Welcome back. All right, so this is the answer that I got. Now this one here, you notice that you were alternating signs, so that meant that we needed to have the negative one raised to some power. Now, for the terms in the sequence, we had a two, then a one, then a one half, and then a one fourth. So it looks like that in order to go from one term to the next, you needed to multiply by a one half. And there we go. This one here was our common ratio. So then we knew that we we're gonna be dealing with a geometric sequence, which I'll write down the formula again. For a geometric sequence, the formula is the first term times r raised to the n minus one. And that's basically what we have here. Okay, so this is it for this example. Now let's take a look at the next one here. So for the next one, we have the sequence one, then x, then x squared over two, then x cubed over six, and x to the fourth over four, and then lastly, x to the fifth divided by 120. All right, now this one here is looking a little bit trickier. So how do we proceed? Well, I'm first gonna focus on the numerator here. So I have a one, then an x, then an x squared, then an x cubed. Okay, so for this one, I'm thinking that we can have here a sub n is equals to, well, it's equals to what? Uh, well, let's see, it's a first guess, since I know that I'm having x's, I have here an x raised to the n. But will this give us the correct terms? For example, if n is equals to one, well then if n is equals to one, we should be getting a one, and if n is equals to two, we should be getting an x to the first power. So if we just have an n here, well, if n is one, then our first term should be x to the one. That's not what we want though, because we want the x to the second, I'm sorry, <laughs> we want n two to be x to the first. So how do we correct that issue? Easy fix, all that we need to do is simply subtract a one to the n. Now would that work here? So if I say x to the one, I'm sorry, x, the first term, should be x raised to the one minus one, which is x to the zero, which is one. Okay, so that checks out. What about the second term? Well, if I have x raised to the two minus one, well that's x to the first, which is exactly what we want. All right, so it looks like we should have an x raised to the n minus one as our numerator. But what about the denominator though? And I'm just gonna erase this. Now the denominator can be a little bit trickier. Now, on the denominator for our first terms, it's over a one, and the next one here is over a one. Then a two, then a six, then a 24. Is this one here a geometric sequence? It doesn't look like it because, well, there is no change as you go from one to one, and then from one to two, okay, you're multiplying by two, but take a look at the next pattern though. So, if I go from one term to the next, one to two, I am multiplying by two, but as I go from two to six, well now I'm multiplying by three, then if I go from six to 24, well it looks like now I am multiplying by four, and what if I wanna go from 24 to 120? Well, I actually need to multiply by five. So notice here, guys, you're multiplying, well this one here, might as well do it, times one, oh look at that. You're multiplying one times two times three times four times five. So it looks like you're multiplying consecutive integers. So 
this is a nice indication that what we're actually dealing with here in the denominator is a factorial. So this one here, we're going to be dividing by an n factorial. But would that work though? And again, we can verify it here. What if we want to get our second term? Well, then we know that the top is going to work. That's going to be 2 minus 1 divided by 2 factorial, which is 2. So we should have an x to the first over 2. Mm. But now, well, it looks like our second term doesn't quite work in the denominator. We don't want a 1. I'm sorry, we don't want a 2. We want a 1. So how can we fix it? Because we are getting a 2. It's just that it's on the third term. Well, what do we need to correct on our denominator? What do you guys think? I'll let you pause the video to think about it for a second. But I'm just going to give you the answer here. So hopefully you pause the video. This one here is not going to work as it is. But what we need to know, what we need to do here is take away one and then take the factorial. Would that give us a desired outcome now? Well, if we switch it here, we have two minus one factorial. Well, two minus one factorial is one factorial, which is one. And that's what we want. If we check it with, I don't know, the fifth term, then only focusing on the denominator, we're going to have here a five minus one factorial, which is the same thing as a four factorial, which is the same thing as a four times three times two, which is a 24. Is that what we want in our fifth term? Yes, it is. So it works out. So our formula here is a little more complicated than the other ones, but with the tricks that we discussed or the hints that I mentioned, it's pretty manageable. Okay, so this is where we're gonna be stopping here for this video, and we'll continue on with part three, discussing the limits of a sequence. See you there.